Wunderbar. Wonderful. Es ist mir eine warme Ehre, It is a honor to me to introduce this talk. Um, Netpolitik, Netpolitik in Switzerland, Bodensee between the Bodensee and the Matterhorn. I might present for this talk the Trio Infernale. Martin Steiger. Martin Steiger. The guy currently on the rightmost position. The speaker of the digital society. This is Paki Patrick Kire. Uh, in the middle and Kire, the um, CEO of the digital society. Kind of CEO. Ja, herzlich willkommen zu unserer Reise durch die Schweizer Netzpolitik. All right, welcome to our trip through the Swiss net politics, as every year. The Digital Society is a um, non-profit organization, and these are is, these are our um, partner organizations, and we represent another 400 uh, individual members as well. Between the Bo Bodensee in the northeast and the Matterhorn in the southwest, a lot of things happened. Um, one of our federal councillors um, said the following thing. I really don't protect my computer. I just don't leave it lying around. That's the best protection. That's quite a statement from the previous Minister of uh, Defense who said, well, NSA can't really... Um, Uh, surveil us because like Swiss German is, is, is almost a kind of protection um, and he's from the canton Bern which is where we continue in Zimmerwald in a small um, spot in, 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 in Bern it's, it's a few kilometers southwest of um, Bern airport which is where signals intelligence um, based on cables is happening Well, we were there, we checked it out from the air. We flew across there in like low low heights, and that's where the Center for Electronics Operations of the Swiss Army has its seat. And you can see there are uh, satellite dishes and, and, and radio installations, and they do this so-called uh, cable intelligence. And this is kind of how it's uh, visualized. We have users in Switzerland and they use the internet and the internet is international and, and so data crosses the border and that data is, is locked in, in, in a kind of mass surveillance without suspicion um, and they are stored just in case. And, well, the, 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 the center searches this data for certain search terms and, and filters them and just, you know, takes a look. And uh, the internet providers have to, to cooperate and all of that is, is secret and, and nobody really has any rights about that. And, of course, this is called cables intelligence because it um, affects uh, fiber um, glass cables. Um, and... Uh, of course, it, 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 it doesn't just affect metadata, it also affects contents and, and uh, it's approved by the um, Minister of Defense and, 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 uh, uh, and also by a secret court. Um, and it's filtered by, by sort of search terms, but not the, the search terms themselves aren't um, approved. And um, that's done through the army and then the results are, are um, analyzed by the civil um, intelligence service. And uh, as we saw on, 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 uh, when we flew past, when they aren't just uh, violating human rights, they, they are taking a break sometimes. And these, as you can see, aren't um, civilian um, members. The, these are military uh, members of the military, and, and they are they are looking for recruits. And please don't do that. That should not be a, a job. Violating human rights and basic fundamental rights is not a good idea to do as a job. Um, of course, they um, are aware that they are being surveilled as well. So uh, for security reasons, they ask you to uh, uh, send in your application forms and, and, and data in paper form. And of course, they assure you that they are being discreet with your data. Um, but please don't do it. It's, it's a bad idea. It's not just Zimmerwald. <laughs> There is also information, the surveillance infrastructure in, in other locations. Um, Uh, you can see another one here. 
Um, that's where radio and satellite surveillance happens. Or in Leuk, in the Valle, there is a lot more. Um, half of this, is, by the way, is Swiss and the other half is American. And uh, while you can ask yourself, uh, do they cooperate? Um, we have to leave that question open. Of course, as the digital society, we um, uh, are not happy about this. We um, filed an administrative appeal. Um, we currently, this appeal um, lies with this building. That's the um, Federal Court of Administration. Um, we don't know when it'll be dealt with. We are hoping that it'll happen next year. But there's one problem, which is that this Federal Court of Administration is the aforementioned secret court for the uh, cable intelligence. So the same um, court has to decide on both things. And of course, we don't even know what they decide for cable intelligence because it's secret. So we have to uh, expect that they will decide against us and it'll continue. We'll go to the Federal Supreme Court and then we go to the um, European Court for Human Rights in Strasbourg. Um, and we hope that at the latest there we shall win. And in Strasbourg is where it'll um, continue with Pocky. In Switzerland, of course, we have data retention um, since 10 years ago. And... Um, here we have reached um, Strasbourg, this beautiful court um, with our um, appeals. We um, appealed uh, against the um, data retention and, and metadata retention. Um, and uh, beginning of March, um, we got the decision from the federal court that yes, it, it, it violates fundamental rights, but the interest in, in public security and so on um, matter more. And uh, that's a kind of argumentation that we know from Germany, but apparently it applies in Switzerland too. And anyway, we're just, you know, we, we, we uh, just store metadata. And it's not like NSA says we kill based on metadata. We continued onwards to the European Court of Human Rights uh, with this. Um, and we can only do that because Switzerland still cleaves to international um, con contracts and, and, and treaties. And um, potentially we might um, have lost access to this um, had the Swiss decided differently. Until this is decided, the uh, surveillance law, the BÜPF, is still um, in force. And so the service um, responsible for this surveillance um, has found a way to further extend their powers. They, they, they have a, a notification um, and... Uh, Usually that happens through executive decisions uh, where you could appeal or go through a process and here that just sort of happened. Um, and in there it says that the, the, the surveillance service um, um, defines um, very vaguely um, who has to uh, retain metadata and if, you, if this applies to you or not, um, is the way you find that out is when you get an order from a court. Um, so this is now being enforced. And um, who doesn't um, store metadata uh, according to these rules um, will have to um, pay a fine of up to 100,000 um, Swiss francs. And... Um, and so it, th this can be very costly, so everybody will have to save metadata because um, asking ahead of time um, uh, is kind of risky as well. And so um, here we see a sample of uh, from Martin um, about the metadata that has been retained about himself. So interesting is you get the IP address that Martin's phone actually had, but I mean, that's not really useful. I mean, missing is where you're connected to, to which IP address. Um, 
Also for the antenna, the mobile cell antenna, you only get the place of the antenna, but not kind of wi into which direction the user was from the antenna. That's a trade secret. Uh, yeah, so it's not very detailed. But Martin also got 20-year-old uh, ISDN contracts with his uh, request for information. I mean, uh, the product Swisscom doesn't even offer anymore. So uh, then the question was, do they have to keep this as long? Are they even allowed to keep this stuff that long? We had some kind of weird decisions of our uh, Supreme Court in, in the domain of uh, IMSI Catcher, that's Stingray in English, this type of device here. So according to the old law, very specific uh, cases, it was only allowed to use this. And now the Federal Supreme Court decided, well, um, you could have used the Singray before. Um, yeah, so kind of it was made legal after the fact. Um, an important uh, case for the new surveillance law actually kind of fell away with this. But uh, we have this new surveillance law and um, so kind of Switzerland isn't really that good uh, in terms of privacy. So we're now falling behind the European Union. Um, also, we don't really have a, um, a constitutional court. Constitutional court, yeah. And now we have a new law to surveil um, um, social insurance fraud. So with the new law, a lot of surveillance um, can be done without actually um, a court decision. So yeah, some companies advertise uh, with kind of how safe Switzerland is in terms of privacy. That's actually not really their case. So this here is us uh, bringing the signatures for a referendum to the chancellery. So the, the company that uh, advertises with privacy in Switzerland is from the canton of Geneva. And this is where our story continues with Martin. We don't really have to introduce Geneva. Uh, Geneva is kind of the e-voting or internet voting place in internet. Uh, internet voting place of Switzerland. So in Geneva, there's places that look like, look like this. This isn't actually... The, uh, unrelated to e-voting, we just had a visit at the CERN. So they have this cool thing, the Antimatter Factory, where they produce antimatter and do other cool stuff. There's other interesting stuff there, which kind of makes you afraid of the apocalypse. So uh, kind of where does the CERN buy its stuff? Symantec, for example. These boxes were all over the place there. I hope they're not using this as critical infrastructure. So the canton of Geneva didn't just introduce uh, e-voting, they also developed their own system. So it's one of two providers in Switzerland. It was called, it's called CH Vote. So you can order it there if you want to introduce, do internet voting in Switzerland. Well, I mean, you could have ordered this, but um, a few weeks ago there was this headline, hackers find a security flaw in one of the biggest e-voting systems in Switzerland. These were hackers from the Chaos Computer Club. It turns out that you, a user, a voter, can be redirected to um, a fraudulent website. So, I mean, as you can imagine, this is a serious problem if you're redirected to a different website to cast your vote. So, this went through the media and um, the Canto Geneva. What did they do? They uh, sent a, f um, a formal warning. So that was in French, uh, came from the state of Geneva. There was a few interesting things in here. Um, so apparently um, we violated the, <laughs> the law protecting the coats of arms. Or um, it actually, <laughs> it actually... Uh, that it was a crime against the will of the people and that they undermined the confidence in the final results. Yeah. So this typical situation, there are some bad news and then you get punished for it. 
So also this uh, coat of arms protection, all that kind of very exotic. What is this? So this is a screenshot from this formal warning. And here you can see the, the coat of arms of the participating cantons. So if you manipulate this website, you reuse these coat of arms symbols. And so this is actually a federal crime. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, we had a different case where a journalist was sentenced uh, because he was able to show that you can vote twice in the can of Geneva. So in first instance, he was guilty and the federal Supreme Court then dropped the charges. So he should be thanked for the work that he does. So after we, relieved, we received our formal notice, uh, three weeks, uh, nothing happens. And then there, the next news headline, a dark day for internet voting in Switzerland. Well, I mean, I think it wasn't really a dark day for me because the uh, state of Geneva announced we're stopping our e system development of this internet voting system. But it was an issue of security, it's an issue of money. Much too expensive. So the canton of Geneva isn't really uh, poor, but they think they can't really afford this anymore. So these e-voting systems, there's a... Uh, so there's a public call to, for um, companies to develop this and here the so the technology and security has a weight of 5% in the rating. So there are also here um, requirements according to the BSI. Very interesting. So we didn't find these requirements. But uh, yeah, so as you can see here, the, the weight isn't really on security. So there's one... Uh, service provider left for internet voting. It's uh, the Swiss Post and they offer a product from Skytel. They're from Spain, this company Skytel, and they're the world leaders in e-voting. From their website, we power democracy. And they really mean it. If you look more closely, they really do everything. Election training, registering voters, uh, you can vote on the internet, then there's results consultation, uh, whatever that means, and there's election night reporting. So we can buy all of the direct democracy from this one company. So how is this company financed? With venture capital, of course. Many uh, lovely investors here. So they give you money, and of course they want to make a profit. So profit is definitely comes first over security. So good luck if you trust the system like this. So in Switzerland, there's still uh, the federal council that trusts in internet voting. So it was just trial runs so far. And now it's supposed to be officially the third way of being able to cast a vote. And so now organizations like the Digital Society Switzerland can... Uh, publicly comment on this, uh, on voting on the internet. We also do other things. So we want to have um, a public referendum, a moratorium on e-voting. Um, on e-voting so that it can't be done unless it's at least as secure as paper ballots. So you have to collect 100,000 signatures for, to be able to do this. And then, uh, yeah, we hand them in in Bern, and I give over to Paki. Okay, so we continue in Bern with uh, internet blocking. <laughs> so I think in, in all our talks, uh, internet blocking uh, was a topic for us. So this is kind of a symbolic image. Um, most decisions in Switzerland are made in Bern. Um, yeah, so internet blocking. For politicians, they look something like this. This is a, um, a border fence. Only things that uh, government employees want to let through actually go through. Though in reality, it actually looks more like this. I mean, I showed this picture last year already, but uh, yeah, it's really kind of symbolic for the state of things. So in Switzerland, internet blocking is, is uh, very popular. So Swisscom actually advertises net block, net internet blocking for uh, 
private users, so I'm not quite clear what this is, but looks like the first dose is free. So, in the Swiss gambling law, we now have internet blocking. They wanted to kind of uh, block access to foreign casinos. We collected 50,000 signatures for a referendum. Yeah, so this is us handing in those collected signatures. Technically, they're not specified in the law, but um, supposedly they have to work in a way that even if it's a subpage on Facebook, that subpage can be blocked without blocking Facebook. So this is kind of an information leaflet uh, that came out before the, the referendum was voted on. Yeah, I mean, so there's kind of uh, um, some issues here, obviously, if you think about it. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we lost this referendum with 34% of votes, but uh, we just couldn't kind of compete with uh, starving squirrels and uh, disfunded zoos. So, yeah, this was really the first law in Switzerland that had internet blocking and didn't really legitimize, was legitimizing this vote. So this really kind of sends out a signal. So, I mean, on one hand, we could collect these 50,000 signatures just based on this topic of, of internet blocking. But then on the other hand, now there will be other upcoming laws that actually uh, will include internet blocking probably. So next one is the law that regulates telecom service providers. They have want to block illegal pornography. So um, if you access then one of those blocked uh, IPs directly, you will get kind of a placeholder page like this. Um, so kind of uh, in some weird way during the uh, crafting of this law from a can be implemented, it was changed to the must be implemented, even though everybody knows these uh, blocking is not effective. And these blocks are easy to um, bypass. Who need, who wants to know, um, can to go can go to a consultation process answer that I wrote um, on the government's webpage, and uh, I included how to bypass blocks in this document, which is now hosted by the government. Of course, we fought um, for having a. Uh, deletion um, mechanism into this law and, and we, we won and now there is a delete and block um, formulation in the law and we just have to keep a sharp eye on, on how this is being implemented. So this is only possible because politicians support us and give us access to the uh, federal palace um, this is a pass that Bernard got and they, Bernard and, and others fro, from the digital, digital society go there and try to talk to people and show them this image about net blocking and um, a lot of thanks to Bernard and Jürgen, I think. Jorgo. Jorgo, sorry. Um, and we will continue need this work because the next uh, law is already in the pipeline and that's the copyright law and that's uh, continuing in Zurich with Martin. So, copyright law. In Zurich, we don't just have the, the River Limmat and this nice old town with churches, but also a society which is called Audiovision Switzerland. And that is part of an alliance against internet piracy, which... Uh, uh, applies pressure to um, enforce the law. And they have the Swiss flag in their logo, but it's really about this. It's about the Americans who have this idea of a strong copyright law and they want to um, implement that worldwide. And Switzerland is one of the few countries that hasn't done so yet. And this leads to U the US declaring Switzerland a pirate state. What does that even mean? Well, we're put on a list as a country, which currently this year looks like this. 
He's showing an image of the watch list where Switzerland is in good company with funny other countries. So Switzerland is not in the priority watch list, it's on the watch list here between Saudi Arabia and Tajikistan. Um, so the countries on the priority watch list are having more pressure applied on them. Uh, but even in Switzerland it works. And um, so we get a we got a list of demands and, and a lot of that has already been um, uh, done. So we re-legalized mass um, formal warnings. Um, for file sharing, um, that's we had that once. We got rid of it, and now it should come back. Um, all of any pictures, any photos on the internet should be protected. Um, of course, we know how that works from Germany. It's getting expensive. Um, upload filters, take down and stay down, should be implemented. Not for all providers yet, but for many. An internet tax should be introduced. Um, if you share things on social media, um, you should pay. Of course, not directly, but sort of um, we will have to indirectly pay when we buy a smartphone or internet access. And um, replay TV, like um, having to watch TV in a non-linear way, um, should have gotten rid of, but wasn't, but it might get more expensive. And now more n internet blocking. It's not happening yet, but the Americans are applying a lot of pressure there. And so it's not clear if that might not come after all. And of course, all of that has consequences. Um, like, we know this has consequences because of um, file sharing. Like, there have been uh, searches. Um, so, like, police shows up six in the morning and takes along all of the IT devices. And, of course, that were those weren't, like, pirates somewhere in a cellar. The, the, those were families and students and nice people. So that was kind of unpopular, and so it went away. But, like, yeah. But even for images, look here, the um, vegetarian chops way. Um, and uh, for this image, uh, roughly 2,500 euros were... were um, Organized. So, I mean, it's a valid way now to make money with food porn because you can take a nice picture, put it online, somebody is stupid enough to, to copy it, and now you ask for money. So, next thing is we move to Gerzensee, which is a nice little um, uh, place in Thun. Um, so, data bounty. Um, we have a lot of data lying around, including in places where it's not supposed to be lying around. So, in Gertzensee, we are talking about hellocut.ch, which is a portal that um, brings people together who need a haircut with people um, who can provide a haircut. And this portal suddenly went down and all of the hairdressers got um, news like this. Turns out they got their server hijacked by a crypto trojan. They didn't have any um, uh, backup. It was a military full bit encryption. Technician was inform in, in, informed, and the portal is back up. In the next case, it hit someone bigger, Migro, one of the biggest um, supermarket chains in Switzerland. And Martin wanted his data um, and asked for data in a formal way, and he got an answer. Of course, they have a process and it works. So a few days later, he got a he got a letter. Um, unfortunately, he didn't just get his data, but those of a random woman he didn't know. Wasn't the only case that something like that happened in Switzerland? Um, Coop Bank, the Coop Bank, Bank Claire these days, sent um, the wrong um, year's end data to a lot of people. Um, that didn't lead to any trouble at all. 
But at least it was clear who had to pay for a beer for everyone. Of course, with our privacy laws, nothing happened to the bank. We do not have any uh, relevant passages in the law. And of course, it was all the, the intern's fault. It's always interesting to read these um, uh, letter templates, um, these standard letters, because they, they give an insight in how um, companies and the state work. And you should do that, and, and, and you should ask the companies regularly for your data so that you kind of know what they do, and they don't forget to make sure that you can know. Of course, from your telecom provider, you want your metadata, and of course, um, Migro probably does not have your um, metadata. So the next story were taxes. Taxes is kind of, you know... Good and bad. Of course, you want uh, the roads to be nice and, and, and trash to be collected. Um, but unfortunately, there is the software that you could use to uh, do your taxes. It runs under Linux, too. And um, that's been outsourced. And you can scan your receipts and everything um, and do your taxes. And unfortunately, they just end up on the Internet visible to everyone. They forgot to set uh, their cloud storage to not browsable. Eh, what can you do? It happens. It's like tax data isn't exactly private. Everybody talks about it in Switzerland, of course. They uh, heard from it. From the researcher, uh, thought it was a joke and only reacted when Heise asked about it. And at this point, um, the page is down and they are celebrating the new year and what it looks like next year um, for us um, is what uh, Kira is going to talk about now in Bremgarten. So for a good 2019, I'm going to talk about what's going to happen in the future. And we start in Bremgarten. We're going to have an excursion there. Um, that's where the seat of the um, digital society is. That's where we had our first um, meeting. Um, and we still meet every half a year. Uh, on the 4th of May, um, roughly 30 people will, um, from the different net politics oriented organizations in Switzerland, will meet and talk about uh, common topics and um, things to do. Bremgarten, it's an idyllic little city at the Roy, on the River Reuss. Um, but of course, that idyll is a bit deceiving, uh, at least if you trust this quality paper. He shows a boulevard paper headline saying Bremgarten um, is seen as a nest of leftist extremists. Um, that was due to um, raids that happened um, after the G20 demonstrations. Um, and somebody was searched for in the cultural center in Bremgarten in, in, in a big raid and unfortunately that person wasn't there um, as far as I know they were home at that time and were left to walk free after a short conversation um, that had consequences in, in, in Hamburg. These biometric data um, that was gathered at the G20 um, had to be deleted because it was gathered in an illegal way. Um, and oh, this is the um, search warrant for this um, whole thing. Of course, uh, luckily, um, at the first Winter Congress of the Digital Society in February 2018, we um, had a presentation about how to act when the police um, rings your doorbell in, at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, on the 23rd of February 2019, we will have the second Winter Congress of Digital Society. Um, you can buy tickets and... Uh, 
The link is on the slide. At, in the same place in the Zentrum Karl der Große in Zurich, there will be a second um, uh, event. Um, and this uh, is a series of events. Um, and the next topic will be digital digitalization in education on the 10th of January. And on the 11th of April, um, data ownership will be the topic. Right now, we are going to continue with a workshop in the lecture room M1. It's one, um, one floor down through the glass hall and um, uh, to the right, just ahead of Adams, there will be a workshop there um, right after this talk where we will um, deal with the topics um, for 2019, how to get involved. And um, of course, we are here for all four days. Um, we have our own um, space um, in the About Freedom Cluster, just one floor down as well. We look forward to your visit and interesting conversations. Thanks a lot. We have a very short time left for questions, and otherwise we shall meet at the workshop in Lecture Hall M1. Yeah, we have here here vorne microphone two, microphone one. Okay, microphones, please, uh, please. Uh, Line up at the microphones if you have questions. Are there any questions from the internet? No? Well, if no one stands up, then from my end, thank you very much. I guess another chance for an even bigger round of applause. Yeah, and damit seid ihr nicht entlassen. Okay. So, thank you for your attention. And remember, organizations like this really live from your volunteer work. If you're from Switzerland, please help out the Digital Society Switzerland. If you're from other countries, uh, help the organizations uh, in your country. Mm -hmm.